Here we go. We're about to watch Christine get married. Ladies, move. Gentlemen, move. Oh, overdo. Give me some room. Ready. Gonna get a little fun. Ready. I'm gonna get married. We don't waste a lot of time. The procession starts a couple of minutes into the episode, and look how cute those kids are! As some of the parents are coming down the aisle, we get this shot of Gabe, Janelle, and Savannah, who are all holding back tears. Truly looks absolutely phenomenal in her straightened hair and purple jumper. But of course, nobody tops the main event. I saw her like three months ago when the wedding happened to IRL, but I still am like blown away with how beautiful Christine looks. And I'm sure David would agree if the sun wasn't shining into his eyes like a blinding vortex of light. When she come walking out, I'm like, there's my goddess, there's my queen, my unicorn. What does the nanny do? After everything Cody has said about Christine being a sister wife, a non-loyal, non-attractive, nacho-eating nightmare, it feels so right listening to David describe Christine as his queen. As soon as I turned the corner, it was like, again, just like a breath of fresh air. The scene presented to us as David's son-in-law starts the ceremony is just breathtaking. I mean, I have never in my life been like, oh, honey, you know where we should go? We should go to Utah. You know, look a little romantic getaway to the old ta of you. But watching them on that stage, I was like, honey, pack your bags. We're gonna go mountain climbing with the Mormons. As Corbin is going off about matrimony and whatnot, we get a hint at what will become the underlying theme of this episode, Christine's horniness. In front of a beautiful couple. Showing the world that they cannot be knocked down. Showing the world that they cannot be knocked down. Corbin's telling his jokes and Christine's like, can't wait to f you. No chance, those clothes. No chance. They're getting shredded by my teeth. I'm gonna kill your penis. We learn some incredible things about David through Corbin, the wedding officiant. Like how David helped his neighbor make his house wheelchair accessible. I mean, Christine wanted the opposite of Cody. And it sounds like she got it. Like. Can you imagine Cody helping anyone other than Robin or himself? Like, oh, I'd be real happy to help you uh, if you just want to go ahead and sign your assets over and then I'll we'll get you real settled into a barn dominium. Very wheelchair accessible in the barn dominium. Of course, I'm obviously... The Barnuminium will be on Mary's land, not, not mine and Robin's precious land. Corbin takes an Ellen moment to encourage everyone to be kind the way David and Christine are. I'd like to invite everyone here today that we take time to line everyone's day around us. And it reminded me of how in the South, whether it's a funeral or a wedding, the preacher will almost always slip a call to Christ in, which, hey, better at a wedding than at a funeral. At a funeral, it's sort of like, that could be you. Are you right with God? Dave, do you take Christine in front of these witnesses today as your wife? Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> Hells yeah. Christine, do you take David as your husband? I do. Yes. <laughs> 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 Truly's job is to bring the happy couple their rings, and as she comes on stage to give them, she says, You deserve the best mother. She does deserve the best, truly, and it's nice that her children all recognize this, despite Cody painting Christine as someone who deserves less because she didn't crawl up Robin's ass with Cody. And then Truly says something really interesting. For each other. Thank you. For each other. And then he was like, you're not allowed to eat nachos anymore. Oh yeah, his ass got to go. <laughs> 
While during the ring exchange, the cameras flash to Aspen, Mitch, and McKelty, and I am reminded of two things. One, that all of Christine's daughters are so beautiful. And two, Mitch is a certified hottie. We don't dilly-dally. This ceremony is over quick. Christine and David, by the power vested in me by the state of Utah, I am pleased to finally join these two soulmates and pronounce you husband and wife still together both in law and in love. He's like, this time, in law to Christine, so no blinking your eyes and getting divorced Michael Scott style. I declare bankruptcy! And then, in one of many moments of what I deem to be poetic justice, Christine, who spent over two decades getting it like twice a year from Cody, begrudgingly, is so for David, she's like, I don't care if there's hundreds of people here. I'm gonna eat his face off. Dave, you may now kiss the bride. <laughs> <laughs> the best part is David responds by lifting his leg and I thought it was adorable. Corbin announces them as a married couple for the first time ever. And I'm not even mad that he does it as fast as humanly possible because I'm with all the kids and all the fam. I am happy for them and I am ready party <gasps> not so fast amanda <laughs> we're gonna do a slow-mo replay of them making out again damn <laughs> oh hot okay now we're done they look just incredible walking down the aisle as husband and wife. Love and marriage, love and marriage. You did it! Congratulations! Oh, that's a broken tree. I think this tree's mad at you. All these trees are mad at me. They wanted to live. I have to reiterate how unnecessary Cody and Robin's part in these specials is. In part one, I was like, there's nothing going on really besides facials and a boat ride. But in part two, I was like throwing my nachos at the screen. I was like, Bleh! I don't want them to be part of this. But here we are, back at Casa de Kidney. That this wedding is happening is really none of my business at this point. Even Cody agrees he shouldn't be in the wedding special. My only concern would be for my children. Hey, Cody. <laughs> like you care about any kid that dared to come out of a womb other than Robin's. I met David once. I, I don't know anything. Right. So you don't really care about Truly or who she's living with. It seems lately like Cody and Robin can't be on screen together without her shoving her appendages all over him in order to physically restrain him from speaking. And I'm just gonna keep talking until those cameras leave. Let me guess. Mm. I mean, the difference between someone kissing their partner because they're hot for them and someone kissing their partner because they want to shut them up and end the scene is night and day. Love the Janelle and Christine pics. So bestie, best friend. Best friend. Eat it, Cody. Eat it. <laughs> Thank I would you. even say, you're lovely. <laughs> I'm gonna get emotional. They're iconic, these two, iconic. The camera person's practically acting like they're snapping Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. And I, I get it. If I was doing their pictures, I would be so far up their butts. I would be like, can I just say, you two, first of all, queen, not, no, queen is even right. Masters, you have your own galaxy. Would you mind lifting and bending over slightly? I would like to crawl my head. I would like to physically crawl up your butt. I, I would I would be doing the same thing. We cut to Mary in confessional. I absolutely love the idea that Christine has found David. She talks about how she's in a great place, which I think is true. And then she looks into the camera and she's like, one more thing. To anyone out there who thinks I'm not gonna find a man, you. I completely anticipate that I will find somebody, that I will be able to find somebody who really loves me too. You know, just it's a matter of when and how that all works out. I'm not a psychic, but this is gonna happen. Spoiler alert, if you don't want to know IRL stuff that's happening in real time because of social media, fast forward 30 seconds. But there is a reason Mary is being so confident in these confessionals. And it's probably because she's already met somebody at this point. She just announced him days ago and I'm honestly a little bit disappointed that we maybe aren't going to get to see Mary date just like with Christine. But hey, I guess they were selfish and did the thing that's best for them and the health of their relationships. Thanks, Mary. I guess we'll just watch 
more footage of McKelty being a hot dog. This shot of Maddie and McKelty's daughters was so cute. It really brought me home. Note the shot of David and Christine's engagement photo with Christine looking like a lioness who's just conquered the whole jungle. I believe we get a quick shot of Tony's parents holding one of the twins. And then look at this. We have a line of young people doing the let's make a second polar location thing. David and Christine are absolutely giddy, especially when they get to do anything remotely sexual like feeding each other pieces of an orange or grapefruit, which I'm sure Christine forced them to do so David would have energy for the wedding night. Yeah, Puddle Monkey, the production team that films this show, hasn't gotten to use their camera crane in quite some time, probably since the old bolt mission statement party, and they are excited to bust it back out. We're in this touching moment with Hunter, and it's like a 90s R&B music video up in here. I was like, ah, whatever, at the I won't call you dad joke Hunter makes. But then everyone sort of like uh, makes it weird. I won't call you dad. <laughs> jokes, I love you guys. That awkward <laughs> jokes. <laughs> I'm kidding. All right, we're ready to get to the speeches. And who's leading us into the night? Aspen. Isn't this a beautiful wedding? <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? McKelty. That's why I'm the one speaking and not you. <laughs> She's very likable in this role. And honestly, if TLC would fork over appropriate compensation, like having her, you know, be a more prominent cast member on season 19 would be like a great idea. Hint, hint, TLC, hint, hint. David, as we know, mom gets younger with age. And uh, with you, she acts like a child. Ah. <sighs> To be a former fundamentalist Mormon in your first post-polygamous relationship, we get to hear from David's daughter, Katie, who reveals to the whole wedding that she suggested David go after Christine like the second she saw Christine leave Cody. I She's manifested this. Yes, I first heard that Christine was a single lady. I ran into my husband's office. She's single! I was like, but she would be so good with my dad. Not gonna lie, this part... It's a, just a little weird. Um, I didn't know how to take this. I it It's very different than the Christine chased after David narrative we've gotten thus far. So I was just like, oh, okay. Christine's mom, Annie. Now, I was given Annie a f***ing standing ovation during this speech. You are a warrior and you do battle and people have to reckon with you. You are fierce and strong. You are a fierce warrior. You rode into battle on your snowblower with your fierce warrior-like amazing mom bossness and you defeated the enemy. The Kotex Curly Q noodle-headed enemy. Adventure, fun, playing. We will not go quietly into the night. Thank you. Yes, yes, Annie, yes. We segue into the third act of the episode with Christine using more photo shoots as another opportunity to tackle David's face. There is one thing I know for sure after watching this wedding special, and it is that Christine has the hots for David. Who was telling her I was never attracted to you? I thought you were always gross. Like I had to like really work hard to be with you. And I thought, what is ask kind of thing to say to somebody. Janelle, speaking for us all here. They may be that match made in heaven, and I hope that they have a wonderful day. They may be a match in heaven. Shut up, Cody. Shut your fake face. Christine and David have their first dance. <laughs> this isn't the dance people are talking about. We'll get to that later. It's a beautiful dance, although David doesn't appear to hear Christine order a kiss. After kiss <laughs> I love you. Maybe that's what motivates her later in the night to go full naughty Christina. When I originally saw Hunter's line in the wedding special trailer, I had assumed he was talking about his own experience at the wedding, but he's actually describing Christine here. She's just a, so much fun. She's got a positive feedback loop that just, we're having fun, you're having fun, I'm having fun, we're just gonna keep having more. Yeah. They try out the wedding cakes, which Christine, of course, uses as a perfect time to give David's esophagus a tongue exam. McKelty calls it out. Thanks, <laughs> subject for tonight. Oh, we are. Christine's like, oh, I took nighttime 
Scott's classes just to make sure tonight is David's greatest night ever in the bedroom. Don't you worry, daughter of mine. Now the editors give us like a tease of what is ahead. They like zoom in and flash Christine's Oh, they also use the time between Christine's flash and the dirty dance to put in Gabe's the Brown family is back confessional. It felt like the real Brown family was back. And I hear this guy yell out, Daddy! And I see this big guy running towards David, wrapped his legs around him. Dirty. And we start the dirty fun off with Jared. Who is Jared? Who is Jared? Mike kept on whispering to me. He's like, Jared has a special dance for David. Jared gets things going by giving David a few moves. And right before Jared goes full on into a lap dance, David's like, He was, he's not my son, but we, he grew up in the same neighborhood that, that I was living in. I mean, I still thought it was fun. I still thought it was great. But it turns out we have Jared to thank for Christine's dirty Aguilera phase. Next thing you know, Christine's like, it's my turn. Like, this wasn't planned. This was all Jared. It was like, thank you, Jared, I guess. Tony's jaw is on the floor. His mommy-in-law got moved. David slaps Christine's ass like he's ready for her to saddle up. Christine begins to grind on him. I think they kind of forgot people were there. Yeah, those two are funky as hell. And there's like little kids in the front row of the circle up wearing those glow stick glasses like, whoa. At the end of it all, Janelle is like, I have to say that was a little weird for me. Was it the toddlers? The ones who had a front row seat? Yeah, I am giving them all a hard time but i thought this was like the most memorable thing from the whole episode like th like this is what i'm gonna remember two years from now when i think about christine and david's wedding special i'm you know we had so many great moments we had so much fun so many funny things so many heartfelt touching things but i am gonna remember christine going full dirty aguilera rattling david at her own wedding in front of all of their kids and little kids like, I, this will never leave my mind. We get some huddled up synchronized hand waving. I like to imagine they're all waving their hands to Pony by Genuine. I mean, that's the vibe the episode has taken on at this point. It felt really wholesome. Okay, I guess it is still kind of wholesome somehow because of the love. So much love, all the love. She got her fairy tale wedding that she's always wanted. Yes, she did. We watch as everyone forms a neon stick aisle, but the glow sticks aren't necessary. These two are totally glowing on their own. Good night! <laughs> I'm gonna go f the sh out of this guy. You probably should call an ambulance. Like, right, no, really, call an ambulance right now. I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill him. Wow, what a wedding. Part two had a lot of hype, a lot of buildup, and for me, it lived up to it it was just so much fun and the episode flew by which i always view as a sign that it was a good episode when it's like oh it's already over it's already over okay i'm going to be putting out a video about the talk back look back episodes so stay tuned for that and make sure you're subscribed so you get notified about future content coming your way like monday night lives those are sticking around uh with me james and sarah we are gonna keep going starting with season one episode one so you don't want to miss those.